Hello makers, welcome 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and in today's episode of a Noob's 3D Printing Guide, we're going to talk about slicers. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So after the first few episodes, we've kind of set up the machine and did a test print of the uh, SD card that came with the printer. However, it's time to move on to something a bit different. Now, for those of you who got a 3D printer or are getting a 3D printer, the one thing you'll probably do is you're gonna go online, you're gonna look for files which you can print on your 3D printer, and you're gonna download them, and you're gonna to need to slice them. Now online, you will find a lot of sites which have models which you can download and 3D print for free. And those are Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, there's Pinshape, and many, many more. However, the problem is you cannot simply download a model, throw it in an SD card, and put it in your printer because the printer will not recognize the file. Now all files you will download will be in STL format. Now, STL is a kind of language which the 3D printers do not understand. However, slicers understand STL files. Now in the ideal world, once you download an STL file online, you put it in the printer and it will print. However, even if the printers would understand that language, all printers are different. They come in different shapes, different sizes, uh, different models. You have deltas, you have Cartesian, you have many other types of 3D printers. So it's not a one size fits all solution. So how do you get a model from the online libraries uh, in STL format and get it to print on a 3D printer? That's where slicers come in. Now a slicer is a software which you can download uh, online. You install it on your PC and it pretty much converts STL file into a G code file. Now G code is what 3D printers use to print. Think of a slicer as a translator. He's gonna grab one computer language, which is SDL, and he's then going to translate it in a language which the 3D printer will understand, and that is the G-code. The job of a slicer on high-end technical level is to give the 3D printer instructions on how to print the model. It will tell it at what speed, where to start printing, how much filament should be extruded, how much layer height, how much infill, how many parameters, what are the temperatures it should be printing at, how high the temperatures of the heat bed, and many, many other things in order for the 3D printer to successfully complete a 3D print. Now, a slicer, as a self-explanatory, is a software that will slice a model. It will slice it in many, many different layers. These layer heights, or the amount of layers that a model will have, is usually determined by the resolution that you want to print at. So one of the standard resolutions is 200 microns, which is 0.2 of a millimeter. So it's one fifth of a millimeter. So if you have a model which is two centimeters high or 20 millimeters high, and you slice it in 200 micron layers or 0.2 millimeter layers, it means that you will have a hundred layers for that model, meaning that the printer will do 200 layers on top of each other to complete the model. Now, something extremely important to remember is that 3D printers work on metric measurements, not imperial measurements. That is the only way 3D printers work. So if you're in America, I would suggest you start ditching the inches and start going for centimeters. Now, there are many slicers available online. Most of these are free to download because they are open source. Now, open source mean, yes, they are free to download, but they're also free for communities to um, tinker with. Maybe they want to improve, maybe they want to do a custom version. And most companies will eventually end up doing a custom version for their 3D printer. Now, some of these slicers are Kura, which is by far one of the most popular open source uh, slicer available. You also have slicers or Slick 3R, you have Repetier. An example of a paid slicer, which means that it's uh, a slicer produced by a company which you have to pay for and it's not that cheap, is Simplify 3D. Now, Simplify 3D is quite popular for many reasons. One, it is possibly one of the easiest to use um, uh, slicers. It has a lot of features which help you and assist you and uh, has probably one of the most user-friendly interface that I use. However, for this particular series, we will be concentrating on Kura. So I suggest you download yourself a copy 
and start exploring a bit to see all the um, functions that Cura has to offer. Now, most printers, when they arrive and have an SD card, most of the times, not always, unfortunately, but most of the times they actually have the software to install on the SD card itself. Sometimes it's Repetier Host and sometimes it's Cura. Now, usually when they have the software pre-installed, they also have a, um, a personalized profile for the printer you are using, meaning that once you install the software, you already have a lot of predetermined factors like the build plate size, where does it home, all the attributes that could make this printer print successfully. Now, unfortunately, not every printer will have this software on the SD card or an SD card for that matter. So you would have to download the slicer yourself and then set it up. But setting it up is actually not very complicated because usually what you tend to do is simply set the bed size, um, you set the height, and you tell the printer where the home is and also the communication rate. These things can tend to be quite complicated, so I will get into these subjects on much more uh, depth in coming episodes. But for today, I just wanted to introduce slicers. And in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to set up Cura for this particular printer here. So until next time, please make sure you download one of these slicers. Even if you already have a slicer, you have a 3D printer, download different slicers, start experimenting a bit. Don't do what I did in the beginning, and that is stick to Simplify 3D, get used to it, and then you'll have severe issues moving on to different slicers because you never know what they might offer you. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I also want to thank Profab and Polymaker for making this series possible. I will leave links for both companies in the video description below, so please make sure you check them out. I want to thank my absolutely awesome patrons for their generous support, which helps me keep on creating content on this channel. And finally, also my affiliates, whose links you can find in the video description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Hello. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.